Okay, so I'm going to show you guys a couple of things that we talked about in class today. Uh, just simply some of the, the settings that you can manipulate so that we can produce some of the drawings that we were looking at, and then a few of the, the color and rendering and material options and lighting. So first of all, we're in the warehouse space, which is a kind of cool uh, space to be working in. Probably good to give orientation if you're moving around something, but for the drawings that we're doing, it doesn't, it doesn't work, it's pretty distracting. And so the way that we'll change this is by using your non-drawing hand thumb on the blue button. And this will open your save dialog box. And then we'll just come down to the second option here called settings. And then we'll come across on the third option on the top for workspace. The other thing while I'm here, here's some of your options when we look at mirroring you can manipulate these. We talked about doing some symmetrical drawings or symmetrical body tracings. This would be the mirror lines to begin to play with. But for now, we're going to set the workspace. And so we'll click on the third option over called workspace. There are a few presets. So right now we're in the warehouse. There's a studio setting. You can see as I look around, there's a really nice diffuse light. Um, this could work for what we're doing. If you're using black lines in the white space, the black room is useful, uh, but you'll see there's also the grid on the floor. And there's also a preset for a gray room, which also has a grid on the floor. And this can work good for, for some things, um, maybe using black lines, but you'll see there's also some custom options here. And maybe these were things that I was playing with, but um, if we want to make a custom space, here we can see just a kind of blue space. We have a couple of options, shadows, floor grid, um, HDRI and gradient. So we can turn off our gradient and we could even then change the environment tint. And so we might go to more of a, a white color. And this way there's no, there's kind of nothing around. Uh, and this could work really well for black lines on the page or black, you know, to produce kind of more black line drawings, we can turn off our shadows and we can have this set pretty simply. Um, a couple of other things that we could do while we're here is, let's see, I'm going to make, uh, I'll use my non-drawing hand purple thumb button and we'll make some, I just want to make a primitive shape, a plane. And we talked about being able to manipulate these and also change the color. And while we're here, we talked about adding um, a scale figure. And the way that we do that is with the non-drawing hand blue thumb button. And the fourth option down is prefabs. So under prefabs, what you'll do here is you'll just grab the person and copy them into a space and we can drop them in. We can grab the person and then using both of our, our middle finger buttons, we can just pull out as a way to kind of scale the person up, set them on the plane. And the way that we can manipulate them is when you mouse over with your drawing hand, you can see it turns red as a selection. We have the person selected, and then with our non-drawing hand, the blue thumb button allows us to edit. And once we click that, we can see that as we select, what we're actually selecting are these green hexagons. And as we move those, we can move the mannequin. And there's two levels of this. If we use our right drawing hand and our thumb, as we toggle back and forth, you can see it moves from green hexagons to blue hexagons. And this actually allows you to begin to control with much greater precision individual joints. And so, 
then you can pose the figure that way. As we exit the editing, we'll click again with the blue thumb button, and then we have the object. We talked about shadows as well. And so while we don't necessarily want shadows for the body tracing, if you do find yourself with shadows, one, we can turn it off here. We can turn them on this way. And we actually don't need the shadow on the floor. So we'll just do regular shadows. We can see in this option, there's this flashlight. So if we pick the flashlight and move it, now we can see we can actually set the shadows and set the directionality of that. It's a little strange as we move around the object that the flashlight doesn't move. And so this is something that as we set up particular views, we might wanna set that. Um, and then the other thing is that if you want to draw some objects, I can show you just a couple of basic options for, for some materials. And so you'll select your object and using your, your drawing hand uh, thumb on the color wheel, you can see that we can select basic material, reflective material, tune material, or flat material. And so basic material, we can set a color. Tune material. It's almost easier to pick the color first. Or pick the type first and then the, then the color. And you can see the range here as of the tune material has an outline and it's more cartoony, the kind of basic material and then the reflective has a little bit of uh, sheen to it. And so if you wanted to manipulate your scale figure, you could come in here Let's have the person sit down. And you'll see as I change the, the joints, everything that's downstream also changes. And so if I start with the shoulder, that sets them up, then I the elbow and you can see the entire hand moves when I change the elbow. And we can leave that. So now we've talked about the background. We've talked about the color and materials. We've talked about lighting and posing the, the prefab mannequins. And then we also talked about the symmetry. And again, the white, um, the white background is gonna work well for us as we're doing our drawings. And what I would recommend is just turning off the shadows for that. And then we'll use the stroke tool. We have some options here and we'll set the color to be black. And then we could even come in here, setting the size. Of this, so we start to get a sense of the contrast of those black lines as a way that we start to define a space here. So I hope that helps. And if you have any questions, let me know.